Hey, it's Diana from Physics Girl. These are some common tools, and this is going to be a quick trigonometry refresher of sines, cosines, and vectors, since they are common tools in physics. If you just happened upon this video and you don't know the drill, this is part of my Physics 101 series, also known as AP Physics 1 Review, also known as Physics by Diana. For context, I'm going to level with you that these tools often pop up in high school geometry class, so that's where you would see them first. So, let's apply ourselves <laughs> and jump right in. Okay, I'll get to you guys later. First, vectors. show must go on. Vectors. What is a vector? I hear my teacher inside my brain. A vector has a magnitude and a direction. Okay, great, fine. It's like an arrow. It's got a size, magnitude and a direction. That's true enough. But more fundamentally and more usefully, a vector is a representation of a measurement. And we'll use them in the next section. Now on to defining our trigonometry functions. It all starts with triangles. I'll draw a right triangle, which of course has a right angle and two other angles. Picking another Another angle, I'm going to pick this one, and let's call it theta. Theta is the most common symbol that physicists end up using for an angle. And theta has some value. Since we're talking about a right triangle, the most that theta could be is close to 90 degrees with a triangle like this. Ooh, really tall. So it's a wider angle. And the least that theta could be is close to zero with a triangle like this. If theta is zero, it's no longer a triangle, it's a line. And if theta gets to 90, then it's a triangle that's infinitely tall. So once I've picked a value for theta, I'll say 37. I've also fixed this other angle. Because remember that the angles of a triangle always add up to 180. So if I set the value of two angles, then I've also fixed the third angle. Now let's look at another triangle. It looks just like this one with the same angles but smaller. We call these similar triangles because they're very similar. They have different dimensions but the same angles. The big one is like a magnified version of the small one. And if we know how much it's magnified, then we can relate the two. Let's say on the small triangle, this side length is is 3. And the corresponding side on the big triangle is 6. Piece the cake. The multiplier from the small to the big is 2. And we can use that scale factor. If this side on the small triangle is 4, then this side? Quick and easy. Multiply by 2 and the other side must be 8. And if you're on it with the Pythagorean theorem, you know this is a 3, 4, 5 triangle. So you know that this side, 3, 4, a 5. Which means this side must be a 10. Now let's look at something different. What? Well, let's pick one of the triangles first and look at the ratios of the sides. I'm going to pick this one and I'm going to look at this side to this side. That's 4 to 5. Then I look at this similar big triangle and I notice that the ratio of the corresponding two sides is 8 to 10. That's the same ratio. In fact, if I pick the ratios of any two of these triangles, you'll see the same thing. 4 to 3 equals 8 to 6. 3 to 5 equals 6 to 10. This always happens with similar triangles. If I set my angles in a right triangle, then the ratio of the sides is independent of the size of the triangle. In fact, we have a name for those ratios, sine, cosine, and tangent. But before I spoil more than the names, let's label the sides of the triangle. Let's call this side adjacent to the angle theta the adjacent side. The side that's opposite the angle is the opposite side. And the long side of the triangle is the hypotenuse. Now we name the ratios. The ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse, that's called the sine, which is a word that interestingly came from a translation error by an English dude named Robert of Chester in the 12th century. The word he was translating was an Arabic word for cord, but he thought it was the word for bay or bosom. So he chose the Latin word sinus, which meant bay or bosom. Silly Robert. And sine is usually written like S-I-N. There's even a sign button on your calculator. Try it. Grab your calculator, make sure that it's set to degrees and not radians, and punch in 37, then hit sign. You'll get 0.6, or about 0.6. That's the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse of a right triangle with the angle theta set to 37 degrees. If we punch that in, the ratio of 3 to 5, 3 divided by 5 is 0.6. 
I didn't get exactly 0.6 when I typed in 37 because this angle should actually be about 36.8 for a 3, 4, 5 triangle, but it doesn't matter. Try this with other angles between 0 and 90, and you'll get numbers between 0 and 1, which is the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse. Next, the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse. We call that the cosine of the angle theta, which came from the Latin complementi sinus, the complement of the sine, and you usually see it written as cos. And then the final ratio that's important is of the opposite opposite to the adjacent. That ratio is called the tangent. The tangent, which comes from the Latin for the word touching and is shortened to tan. By the way, there are cos and tan buttons on your calculator as well. So there's a super handy mnemonic for remembering these ratios and it's the famous SOHCAHTOA. Sine is the ratio of opposite to hypotenuse, cosine is the ratio of adjacent to hypotenuse, and tangent is the ratio of opposite to adjacent. Sines, cosines, and tangents are such common tools that we use in physics. Super useful to hammer this into your brain. Eh? For example, they help make vectors way more useful. Let's see how. Okay, I have a vector. Say I'm swimming with a speed of 10, let's ignore the units for now, at an angle of 37 degrees north of my east-west shoreline. So I'm swimming both north and east at the same time. How fast am I swimming north and how fast am I swimming east? Looks like a triangle to me. And triangles mean Sokotoa. Let's do east first. That's this side of my triangle, the adjacent side. Now I follow a procedure that'll become habit every time I solve this kind of problem so that I don't make silly mistakes. First, I figure out, do I need sine, cosine, or tangent? Well, I'm looking at the adjacent side, so I look. So adjacent means cosine. So I'm gonna use my cosine. Step two, I write down the definition of cosine. Cosine equals adjacent over hypotenuse. And step three, I plug in what I know and I solve for what I don't know. So I don't know the adjacent side, I know my hypotenuse, and I know cosine of 37. So cosine of 37.5, equals uh, adjacent over 10. So bring up the 10, 10 cos 37.5 equals my side that I'm solving for. So I don't have the cosine of 37.5 degrees memorized, so I pull out my calculator and I hit 37.5, making sure that it's in degrees. Then I hit cos and then I multiply by 10 and I get about eight. So that's how fast I'm going east is eight. Ta -da. Now let's do north. Same steps. Number one, I want now the opposite side. I look and that's the sign. So I'm gonna use sign. Number two, step number two, I write down the definition of sign. Sign equals opposite over hypotenuse. And then step three, I plug in what I know. The angle is 37, so sign, or 37.5. And the hypotenuse, which is 10, OPP, so you know I'm not just writing zero. Opposite over 10, bring up 10, 10 sine 37.5 equals my side. So then I also don't have the sine of 37.5 memorized. So I punch in 37.5, my calculator hits sine, multiply by 10, and I get about six. So that's my north, six. And I got a bit tricksy for you because 37.5 degrees is an angle that corresponds very closely to our favorite three, four, five right triangle. And this is about double that three, four, five right triangle. And you can get tricksy too, because a lot of physics problems come with some very, very common angles. Those angles are zero, 30, 45, 60, and 90. And it's not required in physics, but it is so helpful and fun, if you're a nerd like me, to memorize the sine and cosine of these numbers, especially the sine and cosine of zero, 45, and 90. The sine of zero is in fact zero. Why is it zero? Think about it. Okay, let's look at what the sine and cosine are of these common angles. The sine of zero is zero. Sine of 30 is one over two. Sine of 45 is root two over two. Sine of 60 is root three over two. A sine of 90, if you see the pattern, is in fact root 4 over 2, which reduces to just 1. And for some really cool geometrical reasons, cosine is exactly backwards. So if you start at the bottom and work your way up, cosine of 90 is 0. Cosine of 60 is 1 over 2. Cosine of 45 is root 2 over 2. So these ones are the same. Cosine of 30 is root 3 over 2. And cosine of 0 is root 4 over 2, which equals 1. So it's a nice pattern, which makes it a lot easier to memorize. And again, it is remarkably useful in a lot of physics and engineering classes to have this table memorized. 
So let's do one final quick example problem with our vectors and our trigonometry. Let's check out a force vector. Let's say I'm walking my dog. Great dog. Okay. I'm a good citizen and she's on the leash, but today she is not acting like a good citizen and she is pulling hard. This pull is a force vector and it is at an angle to the horizon. Angle theta. It's not her fault though, I didn't train her very well. So this is a vector. She's clearly pulling my arm both sideways and down. But how hard is she pulling in each direction? Time for Sokotoa. So she's pulling down and to the right with a force of 20 newtons. She's a very small dog. And at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizon. The sideways component will be the side of the triangle adjacent to the angle theta. So I'm gonna use cosine. Write down the definition of cosine, plug in what I know, and solve. I don't even need my calculator for this one because I know the cosine of 30 is root 3 over 2. Bring up the 20. Root 3 over 2 is about 1.7. 1.7 times 20 over 2 is 17. So my force in the, we'll call it the x direction. My force in the x direction equals 17 newtons. Ta-da! And now the downward force is even easier. So Katoa downward is the opposite. That's my sine. So sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. Sine 30 is my opposite over my hypotenuse is 20 newtons. Plug it in and I've got sine of 30 memorized. It's one half. So half of 20, because I'm going to bring the 20 up, is 10. So the downward force is 10 newtons. So that's my F of Y. And it's downwards again, so I'm going to give it a little negative. And done! We've broken down this force into the two perpendicular components. And that's it! When they ask you what you learned on YouTube today, here are your two key takeaways from this lesson. Number one, vectors have a direction that can be broken up into perpendicular components. And number two, Sokotoa. And here are some problems to work at home to really understand these concepts. Go forth and solve them. Bye!